Hi everyone, I want to talk about leaderboards in Diablo 3. So as you probably know, in Season 23 we have the new class set leaderboards that look like this. So in case you have played the patch you will notice, in case you haven't, every single set has its own leaderboard now with its own 1000 spots and there's also the no 6 piece set. And that is for every single class so you can uh, basically select the build that you want and kind of like look at the rankings for each of those builds. And that is actually really cool. So a lot of people really like this feature because obviously now every set has a bit of like more relevance and uh, can be used for uh, you know more than just salvaging it. And that is really amazing. It has brought back a lot of hype for a lot of people and uh, brought a lot of these old forgotten sets back into the spotlight. But there is the other issue that it's also kind of pointless to really put a lot of effort into those. So personally, I have set the goal, and I'm almost done with that, of ending up in the top 100 of every single set on every single class. So it's in total going to be 42 different solo pushes that I'm doing. And the thing is that a lot of these, especially off-meta class sets, are very fun to push, very fun to play, but there is not really any competition. There's no one really to compete with, no one really to play against. And that is really a sad story in my opinion. Some of them are quite popular, for example something like Shadow Set with Impale is like a fan favorite I would say. You know, this is always going to be played, even if it's not really that strong. There's other builds like Uliana for example, it's kind of like the same story. And then there's also other builds that are just not played at all and it's just not really popular to begin with because people don't really like the playstyle, something like Tragoose, for example. It's not just squishy and weak, but it's also a playstyle that I know a lot of people don't enjoy. And that's totally fine, not everyone needs to like every single build. This is why we have like, you know, 50 or even 100 builds in the game to choose from. The great part is not everything needs to be very close in terms of balance, because they're all like, you know, competing with itself, you're not competing as an Inarius Necromancer against a Bonespear Necromancer. It doesn't make any sense to compare the two because they're so far apart that any Paragon 500 Bonespear Necromancer can beat any Paragon 5000 Inarius Necromancer. While I do expect a lot of massive buffs in the next patch and the following patches probably for basically all the underperforming sets because now they're so clearly visible, I think it's also time to think about giving people an actual incentive to play those sets aside from you know just pushing their own little leaderboards just for fun. A lot of leaderboards are really not played very much. So you can see this here for example on Tragoose there's not even a thousand people on the softcore leaderboard. I'm not even talking about hardcore here which has like half of the set leaderboards not even filled. But even on softcore this exists. And uh, I think this is very sad and kind of not really giving all the sets the attention that they they should have. So the issue that comes with actually pushing Targoos, for example, is you need to gather the full set, you need to gather the jewelry, the weapon, you need to make the full setup, you need to understand and learn how the build even works. And then you might be able to you know push like a GR 115 if you're really lucky. But the, you essentially spend a lot of time and resources trying to get something going that doesn't give you any returns. And especially if you are focused on like the, the season grind when you want to you know grind your certain paragon goal and then you want to you know push with this one or two builds that you fully augment and to use all your bounty mats for to reforge all the good items um, you you kind of just waste time and resources on your way there by doing these other sets there's no in-game incentive to do any of those pushes not even the real push at the end of the season and i think at this point we should really think about implementing something here of course there could also be some kind of like end season rewards maybe everyone in top 100 gets uh, some wings or some other transmog or something like that but i think there also needs to be something that has an actual gameplay purpose like more materials like some extra gems or anything similar to that basically something that makes it worth spending time or at least doesn't make it feel so wasted that you spend time you know gearing up rerolling all your items doing the push even if you do all this very quickly in, let's say, 
literally of one key push and you do like a 10 minute clear on some tier that is like you know 10 tiers below your maximum or whatever even that will need at least like one hour of you know preparation plus push plus you know getting everything rolling and if you want to go a bit further then maybe two hours three hours four hours and in some cases you can you know spend days and weeks pushing you know to the absolute maximum if you want to go you know all the way to the last tier but even if you do some kind of like let's say low effort push you do waste a lot of time that could be spent you know grinding towards the actual end season goal of your main build so my own idea for giving a bit of an in-game incentive and making every single set and every single leaderboard kind of like valuable is to use something that we already have in the game and give people a reward for participating in the leaderboards and for getting a certain rank and that is challenge rift bags so a lot of people log in every single week to complete their challenge rift and if you do that just completing it in time beating the original time you get this one challenge rift cash here so when you open this one you get a bunch of bounty materials i think it's 15 and you get like 5 million gold and you get like a few of the other materials like 200 magic enchanted dust and uh, a bit of rare crystals and stuff like that and uh, well that's about it so overall this gives you a little bit less than what like a normal bounty run gives which also gives you more materials and uh, a few items and you know maybe you find a rainbow goblin and stuff like that but in the end a bounty run is somewhere between five to ten minutes in most cases and also a challenge rift run is somewhere along those lines if you clear it on like first or second try so when you think about the time investment to get a challenge drift cash versus getting a full set of bounties done then they are roughly equal and it's kind of worth doing challenge drifts every single week as a result now if you look at pushing leaderboards you don't get anything you just waste your time you waste your keys you waste your materials and there is no reward for it at all and i was really inspired by this weekly challenge drift cash and i think it would be a good idea to kind of distribute these for each top 1000 that you have you get one of those challenge with caches every week so in a case where you play barbarian and you actually have all the gear for all the six different sets and you take the time to push them all and you end up on the top 1000 on five of those then every week when the challenge with resets you also get an extra challenge with cash for every single top 1k rank that you currently hold now this might sound, might sound like a lot you get five challenge with caches wow but in the end this is like you know worth like three bounty runs and three bounty runs is like yeah 20 minutes or something like that and yeah of course it's kind of multiplies by the amount of weeks in the season but how long does the season really last it's around three months usually so that means you get this reward like 10 11 maybe 12 times so even in the case where you get a top 1k spot that will hold from season start to season end if you never touch the build again you get like yeah around 10 of those caches and 10 challenge with caches are worth like seven bounty runs so we're still talking about less than an hour worth of farming essentially but the good part about this is it actually would give you a little bit back of the, the time wasted and the time lost trying to get that 1k rank and it would allow every single set to kind of be worth playing and worth trying hard with to get into this 1k and kind of give a continuous competition where everyone kind of like wants to you know take a little piece of the pie so to say of all those uh, 1k ranks on all the different sets and it would certainly guarantee that every single leaderboard is filled to 1000 uh, people and it would especially on the lower ends probably you know create um, the incentive to keep pushing and keep pushing i take great delight in actually thinking about you know how this would be in, in in a season where something like this would happen where you do get these rewards and everyone you know goes completely crazy on all the different sets and uh, people would also just explore a much larger variety of the game and all the builds that the game has to offer and it would just be a total massacre on every single leaderboard because everyone wants to get in that one top 1k and it could go even more crazy it could even say that okay the top 100 gets two of those and maybe the top 10 gets three of those so that you have kind of like these steps where people might want to go you know for like a much higher tier to try to get into that top 100 or try to get into that top one top 10 and uh, there would be a constant competition not just in the lower end to get into the top 1k but also towards the higher end of 
all the sets where people that uh, you know really invest all the augments into this one set um, would have a much higher chance of getting the top 10 spot for example or the top 100 spot than people who don't so that this extra effort that you put in uh, is also rewarded. Obviously farming a full set of augments is a much different story. You need to spend days farming all the gems, you need to get full ancient gear and all this stuff. So obviously the cost is uh, much higher but it would still be nice to have a bit of an you know, extra reward for people that actually go the extra mile. Another upside of this concept would be that it actually allows solo players to acquire a lot more bounty materials than they would otherwise be able to because we don't have really any way for solo players to farm bounty materials very much aside from the challenge of caches and this would give them another path towards those materials and uh, just help them out a bit as well. Or in general if you don't like farming bounties then you could instead be pushing and actually you know, progress with your, your, your top solo players and get a bit out of that. So these are my suggestions for how to make leaderboards a bit more viable with, well, actually rather little effort, I assume. And I think something like this or something that kind of like rewards you over time for holding a spot is definitely necessary to give a bit of incentive for people to play all these different builds. Diablo 3 has a lot to offer, but a lot of these things are just never touched by a lot of people. Um, a lot of these builds have never been played by the majority of people. We don't necessarily need to have you know, a big new set or big rework every single season that everyone goes for. We have so much stuff already and it's not really used and that makes me quite sad. So this is why I want to have a system like this and you would have a small little something to reward you for your effort. So. Let's see, maybe something like this would happen in the future. Let me know if you also have some similar ideas or maybe some other rewards that you propose that uh, could fit into the system and uh, make every set viable or something like that. I'd be quite curious to hear about that. And otherwise, hope you like my video and see you guys next time.